welcome to today's edition of Strictly Beautiful. And I'm your host, Christina Boat Matechi. Oh, I can simply call me Chris. Um, I know there is change in our venue, but they wanted to lend today's a talk show with a love of nature. You see the green grass and all, all around us, it's so amazing. Um, today's talk show is so interesting. It's about something we all do. Many pretend they don't do it, but they are doing it. And um, I must say, parents even avoid that talk. But here on Strictly Beautiful, we want to talk about it. It's sex discipline, or we call sexual discipline. Um, I don't know how to bring a lot about this talk, but I have, um, you know, new faces on my show today. They are all new faces. <laughs> Before we start the show, eh, this beautiful lady, I should call her BK. I don't know the real name, but she said it's BK. Actually, her name is Elizabeth. Yes. Hello, Lizzie. BK. BK. BK, come on. Yeah, <laughs> BK, you see that? Yeah. And if you watched um, my previous episode, I just know somebody called her name. We called her in school. That's her. Isn't she lovely? Hello, Nana. Hello. She's one, of, she's one of the best friends I have. She's good. I'm not saying. And I have here. <laughs> Who should I call you? My name is Juliet for simple. Her name is Juliet. And then we have one and only Papa. Papa, that name I can't say. It's only stage for me. Papa is fine. Papa is fine. Viewers, Papa is fine. Don't ask more questions. It's only Oh, you're always smiling. I like your shoe. I won't be favorite to them. No, Julia, I'll point you. I like your shoe. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's like, hey, this one, I'll talk about everything. Uh-huh. So, now you're going to talk about sex. Aren't you all happy to be a Oh, you really think that you'd be so happy about it? Oh, you see, in class, when you really something about sex, you like hear you must do. Yeah, yes, and you know, it's one of the interesting topics on the net. Yeah, like, so you want to open it, you want to make something topics. about sex, you want to open it. Are you right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Oh, we well, don't know that yeah. feeling. Yeah. It's a normal something, like normal something. Talking about sex is not even a joke. Really? Yeah. I think they have to start making money too so good. <laughs> Okay, so today's topic is basically sexual discipline. Um, I actually don't understand the whole thing about sexual discipline. That's why I'm going to get to give me the understanding. My viewers don't understand that. So even if you do, please, you have to get a new explanation to that. Um, <laughs> how do you understand sexual discipline? Oh, okay. Talking about sexual discipline, like sex in this state is about an intercourse between a male and a female. Okay. And if you talk about the discipline aspect, exactly. Okay, then like we have homosexuals and all that, so hiding me on that. And with the discipline is about practicing a certain rules yeah. or a code of behavior, actually. So combining both. It's about behaving in a modest way, okay, related to your sex life, actually, that's how, what I can do. So, okay. discipline is all about self self-mastery. So, with sexual discipline, how well are you able to control yourself when it comes to sex? Like, what are your views pertaining to make down rules, like, as a Christian, as a Muslim? As a traditionalist, as a Buddhist, how, how does your sexual life conform to the laid down principles? So it means just all about your sexual and your own personal beliefs. Okay. So, um, sex um, BK! You know the name, right? <laughs> well, is sex bad? Sex is bad, isn't it? Wow. Sex is good for married people. Because mm-hmm. the Bible says you shouldn't commit fornication. Mm-hmm. And then even married people shouldn't commit adultery. Yeah. So once you are legally married, you have the certificate to have sex. So if you are not married and you start engaging in sex, I think it's bad. Mm-hmm. So that's when sex is bad. But when you are married, sex is good. You have sex. Yes. 
kind of fall for an argument. Juliet, sex is good or bad? Sex is good. To be frank, sex is very good. But it depends on which time you took it, where you took it, in which state you took it. Are you married in the first place? Okay. Are you legally entitled to that? You get well, it. Yeah. So sex is not a bad thing. To be frank, sex is very good. It was to be bad, trust me, God wouldn't have created it. Sex is a good thing, yes, but it's assigned to a group of people. Yes. So if you are not among those group of people, sure, then. my friend, don't try it. Be very, very yes. addictive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very you know, addictive. She said, if you are not part of the group, don't do what practice it. Try it. I think they have to give us certain, um, what's, what are the groups? Married people. Put the ring there oh, before you do what? You practice sex. So, um, today, so that's what I said it is about sexual discipline. How do you say somebody is not sexual discipline? And how do you say somebody is not? Because I'm confused. No, you can't. We don't really see it to be the same. So you forgo the Bible and follow the generation. We are not forgoing the Bible and yeah, the same. Yeah, it's true. What I'm trying to say, like what I'm trying to say, to me, yes, to you, it's a sin, it's bad. To me, it's one thing to be a sin. Really. But marriage. if I have this one pattern, wow. I don't see it to be indiscipline. I see it to be indiscipline in the sense that I have sex with this one today, tomorrow I have this, I have this, I have that. I see the indiscipline so, of sex. So, see, initially, they were saying sex is basically for a typical group of people. And they are saying that it's for married people. And here's the key to also saying that uh, even outside marriage, perhaps, there is no indiscipline. It's okay. To me. So, you are refusing them like right. that. It's for some particular people. Alright, but you can. If you are faithful to one person, if you are with one person, even if it's not a relationship, even if it's not a relationship, at least we can. Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody else. I'm not with it. I'm not with it. Oh, somebody's with you. I'm with you in a way. With you, I'm not with you. Because when you say indiscipline, you were talking about maybe the person is married. And then the person is having sex like with just that person. That's your sexual sex. But you know that this is where people are married. Okay. Oh, you still want to have sex with other people. That was I said adult sexual indiscipline. But still, she has a point. So so you can still be married and you can still be in discipline. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And, and when it comes to what you said, I I I, I think I don't agree with you in a sense that First of all, like it depends on your your religious thing. But I am a Christian, so I can talk for the Christian background. As well. I I don't know about the Muslims and I don't, but I'm sure that it's, it's the same for so you all have yeah, the same thing. Yeah, okay. So the Bible says that. Not of the church. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. sure they also. I'm sure yeah, they yeah, also. Yes. So it says that the sex outside marriage 
doesn't matter whether it is with just one person or two people or three people. Yes. You see, that's why I was saying from the beginning that discipline is about self control. It's about your own self, your ability to see that this thing feels good. It sounds good. It may be, but I, I just have to keep talking. Yeah. So it's not just about you even having sex with one person when you are not married. To me, Sex outside of marriage, it shows how discipline. Oh, wow. so my point. If you are doing that, um, <laughs> I can't judge you. But what Papa is saying it's wrong. Thank you have you. your opinion. If you want to refute her, give me a call. I'll bring you to the stage. Refute her for me. <laughs> okay. Let me pay refute her. Yeah, I still have mine. Yeah. To me, I, I still like have mine. <laughs> I really do love it. <laughs> And um, during my during my research, I found that like there are certain organs in the body that drive the youth, especially the youth, to have the sexual like to have sex and all that. Yes, I saw it. I was wondering, and then I was surprised. I saw eyes. I saw um, hormones. I saw mindsets. The social life. Even the years for some people. Hey, Jesus <laughs> Christ! He had it all. <laughs> so I don't know how this works, and I, I'm praying that it will be out because in the US, you need that help. Okay, I found it from you. Because you know I'm with you today. I'm sorry. I have a problem. He says he can't sleep. They will respond to some, but you know what? This Africa. Oh my God! <laughs> I have, maybe I have some bleaching. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Yeah, hey, yeah. If, you're not, if you are fair and you're always not wearing clothes, what does it like? Yes. That means I'm dark. Yeah, my yes. Yes. Oh, three is to me. Four. Oh, that is beautiful. I know, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, she should say that. I should say black. Uh, I should say black. Yes, you are very beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Don't mind her. Somebody. Oh, oh say that because <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I say that? Did I? I didn't say anything. Fairness is also beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So with the hormones, basically we have estrogen and testosterone. It is produced both estrogen and testosterone. All right. So we have estrogen and testosterone produced in both males and females. But then the level of estrogen is higher in females than in males. And then the level of testosterone is higher in males than in females. So you can see a male with certain feminine features means that he has more estrogen than more testosterone. Than and then a female with certain masculine features means that she has means it's not your fault. Yeah, some, it's some guys, genetic. Like, yeah. But then people who work out, yeah, like ladies who work out, we take supplements to help them. Yeah, those supplements contain some level of testosterone. And then that increases libido. Wow. Yes, it causes an increase in sexual drive. So, especially in um, adolescents, those in their puberty stage. At that stage, there's increase in um, this hormones, estrogen and testosterone. So, anyone at this stage tends to exhibit some kind of edge for sexual activity. So, that is why when you are in the youth stage, you yes, have to see them. Sex. You see them, those adolescents trying to have boyfriends and girlfriends, they need someone to attach and then have those sexual... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then there's also oxytocin, it's called the cuddle hormone, yeah. and then this also stimulates the ability to like um, interact with the opposite sex, but now that we have homosexuals, yeah, anything is possible, so the kind of are sexually drive to do silly things with their silly yeah. yeah, with their sexual organs and all that. Yeah. So it's common with adolescents because the levels increase at that That's stage. Yeah. Are you a science student by the way? Yes, please. I'm that a is science. Nowadays, my show, I'm having many last students too much. Yeah, because we get swag. Hey, many last students, you are here. here. <laughs> um, you're giving me so much. He said estrogen and testosterone. Testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So coming to the um <laughs> and I don't care I'm for you. I'll go to Papa. Papa, can you give us can you line to us on the eye of an eye? Okay. So first of all, I, I would like to make a correction to what people really think. People think we see with our eyes. But honestly we see with our brains. We don't see with our eyes. So oh, our eyes just collect the signals and then our eyes just passes it on along to the brain, which that's the interview. So the, the real seeing is the brain do with our brain. Yeah. Our eye is just like a portal of entry for the stimulus and all that too. You see that when we expose ourselves to a lot of sexual materials like pornographic materials, like we, we, and what we see, see, most of the times it tends to influence us in a way. Like we see a lot of people doing a lot of stuff and then along the, along the line, yeah, we even we even tend to see them as normal because maybe in, in this campus when people walk in pairs like we always see people walking in pairs and they are holding hands and stuff you see because we are in this environment we tend to, we tend to see it as like oh, normal yeah, sex is normal and then you walk around you see sex sexual activities going into the big time don't you see that and you see that because we have we have fed our eyes and then our brains with those images we, we tend to with it, and then we, we, we generate some desires. So, with time, you see that I, I see maybe I'm always watching pornographic movies. Like, I'm always when I see a guy or a guy comes to visit me and we're alone in the room, see that I'll, I'll try to experience what I have seen, like what okay. I have constantly seen. And then, even research has shown that and people, the they, they class, the group of people need to see. And then they expose some people to violent behavior, and then some people to like non-violent behavior. And so the, the people who were exposed to their violent behavior, with time they became violent themselves. Wow. And then those who were not exposed to their violent yeah. behavior, like wow. they were still sober and all that. So what we see really influences our sexual desire, the type of movies we watch, the type of pictures we really see. Nowadays, you see kids, then they're having sexual abuse, like. Have been exposed to these things yes, like so well. right. and your eyes have seen it or brains have no brains are very powerful mm -hmm. your brains have captured mm -hmm. images so the next thing is even unconsciously it's yeah, like doing it yeah unconsciously you see that you're also in the act yeah. then later you come to it what have i done but then shall you already done it so our eyes are what we 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 keep to ourselves we keep to the world Okay, so with our social eyes, I think most of the time, as she said about the eyes, what we see, okay, what we see counts and as well like peer pressure. Pressure. If let's say I have issues, I have issues, maybe as she said, I have seen movies which have those sexual activities in it, pictures, videos, porn, and all that, then I'll just have to maybe you know, Ghanaians, we are going to talk about it, he's going to talk about it with your mom, and it's going to be a whole lot. So maybe a friend, she gets my friend. So if she let me is about who has engaged in something like this, she will just run the thing in such a way like I'll be so curious, very attractive. Exactly. I'm so anxious. So this thing is so nice and I've not tried it all this while to get that thing. Surely I'll end up in it. And also, as she said with her eyes also, most parents sometimes those living in this village, and we have all of them living in one room. 
to they will be lying on the bed, their children are on the floor. Sometimes they are lying <laughs> there, they are kept asleep. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <they're laughs> Please, yeah, eh? yeah. and they can say anything. So, if you have kids around you and they have only one room, I suggest let the kids either sleep, like get some kind of curtains and separate the room. <laughs> And do it such a way that they won't hear, like when they are not around, try and control yourself because they see and they do. Okay, please, you beg you. So, Thank like, you. and most of the time, we copy a lot as you, we copy a lot. So, as I see my parents, surely. Mm -hmm. Friends, peers, yes. uh, I'll give you one. See, um, when you abstain from being sexual and relationship, if you are sexually disabled, does that make you um, be able to uh, reach your goals in life if you are sexually disabled? You can't. You can't. Very well. Yes. So, what if you, you are not? Can you reach your goals? Comparing if you are and if you are not, have you of you reaching your goals when you are? Approximately 100 percent, but if you are not, probably you're not you not reaching your goals. It's also approximately 100 percent, and probably of you reaching your goal, that is even with if you get a change of mindset across or along the way. Do you know even um, I can't judge people, but I know a certain girl. She's as well. You might be thinking where she is is the best, but if she had not, probably where she would have been. My friend, you can't. You can't. We are all different. Yes, we have different ways of reacting to certain reactions. Maybe she's okay with that, and she can do best combining different things. So combination, know your combination. Yes. This is mine. Is always producer. Everything boils down to the mindset. Whatever we do, whatever we see, whatever we perceive has something to do with our mindset. You might be advising people, like restricting them not to partake in certain activities. But how sure are you that they are going to apply to that? It all boils to the mindset. So you have to prioritize yourself, set down, set boundaries. Where do I want to be in the next 10 years? When am I ready to get married? No mind. You need to add this to me. I'll give you a chance and talk to you a lot about this some other time. Okay. But what you said, I like it. You see, you have to make up your mind if you want to be something like. That. And ladies, you see, men, I don't know, they see us to be vulnerable in terms of sex. But you can make it if you really want to have life. And I know that life is not always about sexual activity, it's about you. You can be here without sex. And you can be here with sex, but be careful about the disadvantages here. Okay? Um, we must end the show and then we we'll meet it's so next week. I want to meet you all again. You are all lovely. We are ending the show, but then, you see, it's not only parents are watching, they have a big, they play a major role in our life. So, I want to know that you have been contributing anything to it, or we are just watching us move to the world. So, I'll start with you. Everybody will talk, but please, you know my time. Okay, so, talk about the most parents actually, in terms of guiding the students that they become sexually disciplined. Parents have a lot of rules. You know, children, God created children in such a way that what they see from infancy is where they create their baby and try to like mold their life in that dimension. You get it? So, parents 
So go to life. You know one problem with this thing is that most parents restrict their children. Don't indulge in kissing. Don't indulge in sexual activity. But you don't tell them why they should. Why they shouldn't do it. And you know children do. are very curious. Please do it. Children are need to very kiss because it's this and that. Children are very curious. So as you are telling him or her, my friend, don't do this. Don't do that. It's not good. Tell tell him or her, why shouldn't I do it? Yes, tell them why they shouldn't do it. Make them know that it's a good thing, but this is not the right stage for them. If you just tell them it's not good, you've not said anything. I would like to know why, why it's not good. That's how come they venture into that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> <That's laughs> <That's laughs> <That's laughs> <That's laughs> Sexually disciplined ladies and guys out there. Shout out to you guys. Oh, wow. Some people are left out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so shout out to my mom and my sisters. Like, they're like my support system. So hi to you guys. And shout, shout, out, to Sena. shout out to Saina. Shout out to Saina. Okay. Um, then we are probably sponsored by Bells Plus. As you can see, BK, she's repping it. Isn't it nice? Uh -huh. And then for HL Cut. As I said last week, if you want a nice haircut, just call, contact him, and then he'll give you the best ones. And then subscribe to our YouTube channel 
for it your underscore TV. What is me every weekend? Bring you nice topics and succulent vibes. Okay, see you same time next. I'm your host, Sinawat Matechi, or simply Chris. Shout out to my dad, everybody. I love you all. Songwriter and he could sing, bringing in money like raking the leaves. I was just trying to get paper to sneeze. I chew, that was a blessing. She's special to you. I don't look at her.